Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, and today I wanted to bring you a battery box build. Now, KY4 CKP put together a battery box that has USB connectivity and all kinds of cool things, and he took actually an older battery, which he has since, I think, uh, swapped out, to create his battery box, and I thought, that's really cool, but I didn't have one. And I thought, well, I looked around my Elmer's garage, and he's got these battery boxes everywhere. And I thought, well, let me build one like his. And I'll add an element, which he also uses, an IOTA DLS 45 IQ4 to help keep it charged and desulfated so that the battery will last a very long time. And that's what you see here in the picture. So let's put together a really quick battery box here. And this is for everybody. This is for the tech who wants to have some battery power just in case the mains become unavailable. Now, we've got our battery box, which is just a piece of plastic, about 20 bucks. A battery of your choice. This is a 24 series, so it's not as large as a 27 or a 29. Some wire, and of course, some ends. Now, AC4DM had some wire of the correct gauge, but the terminals themselves that were on one end were a little bit too small to fit over the battery post. So what we're doing is we're drilling out the, uh, the eyelets, if you will, to make them a little bit larger in diameter to accept uh, the size of the battery post. On these uh, deep cycle uh, battery that I have, you have the regular battery terminals and you also have screw on lugs or screw on uh, uh, elements so that these lugs, uh, these eyelets can go down on top of. And as we'll see in a frame coming up, we need to make sure that they'll fit over those. And that's what we're checking here. So you can see the battery box and the battery in this particular case. And yes, they fit great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the actual wire that's going to go to the IOTA. Now, why did I pick an IOTA? Number one, my Elmer loves them. He swears by them. We've got them in the repeater shack up at our main uh, repeater uh, site for both racks. And he's got them in his home. And uh, I bought one when I got uh, new into the hobby and I was just kind of looking around at what he had. And ended up, ended up getting the DLS 45 IQ4. Now I could probably have gotten away with just a 30. You can get them in various sizes depending on the amount of current that you typically are going to be running. But in this case, I'm going to run one radio from it. So what we're doing is we're getting the wires prepped here. We're getting them stripped so that we can uh, tin them or so put some solder on them so that we can put them into the IOTA posts that will screw down on top of these to make a good connection that eventually will go to those eyelets we just saw back to the battery and the battery can be charged and desulfated on a regular interval. Um, AC4DM you, says that you can get years and years and years out of the same battery if they're properly taken care of and that's what we're doing here and that's one of the reasons why the IOTA with the included IQ4 or you can buy the IQ4 module separately and they make different ones for the types of batteries that are out there make sure you get the right one for your battery. So we're going through the tinning process here on these thicker wires. Again, this is going to go from the iota to the battery to keep it charged and desulfated. And uh, we're just getting some soldering uh, skills uh, shown here on the slide. It was pretty cold here in the workshop. We had to even melt the uh, melt, uh, uh, soften, let's say, the uh, flex just to get it in so that the, the solder would flow in and amongst the wires because we wanted those wires to be uh, nice and um, uh, compact. And when we start screwing down on them, we didn't want the wires to just spread out and not make a contact. So uh, that's what we're doing here. Just finishing that up now on the positively. We just did the negative one just a moment ago. So we're just finishing up a little bit of soldering here. And then we're going to connect this to the IOTA. So let's watch AC4DM with his magic soldering iron here just for a few more moments. All righty. So we finished up the positive lead. And uh, now we're just making sure that the solder is spread evenly across the wire. We didn't want it to blob up and we want it to go in and in between the wires themselves. So we get really good contact when we insert these into the iota. So once again, 
We'll just kind of watch a little bit as he adds a little more solder to this particular wire. Now, in fact, the soldering here is uh, not of the same cable. This is actually of uh, the cable that's going to go to the radio. So uh, we're going to put some Andersons on this here in just a little bit uh, as well. All right, so now we're taking the thicker gauge wire and we're inserting it into the terminals on the IOTA. The IOTA is going to plug into the AC on your wall and it's going to help keep that battery charged at all times. If you lose power, the battery will take over. And uh, But we need the IOTA to have good connectivity coming from it down uh, over to the battery so that again it can run through the cycling on that battery from time to time. You'll know when it's charging or going through a desulfating process when you see the light blinking. So here we're just affixing the wires. Now that we have them inserted into the IOTA, we're going to go ahead and uh, test fit the thicker wires here, positive and negative leads, on those screw-on terminals and then test the voltage that we see. We don't have the IOTA plugged in at this point. We're just making uh, sure that they'll, they'll uh, uh, insert correctly, install correctly, and that the lid eventually will fit over the top. Here we have the IOTA blinking there on the right-hand side. Now, this is not plugged in, so in this particular case, it's just letting us know that we're on battery power only, and it will prevent the current from coming back through the IOTA from the battery, and that'll just go to our radio eventually. Now, when we do plug this in, we'll get uh, a voltage going into the battery. In fact, AC4DM AC has connected a little uh, voltmeter. You can see it's about 12 and a half, and that means we're not plugged into the wall, so it's not trying to charge. We're just seeing what kind of uh, reading we can get on the battery itself. Now we've got the IOTA plugged in, and how do we know? It's at about 14.7, and as the IOTA, you can see it's blinking also down there in the bottom right, as the IOTA brings the voltage up in the battery, that will actually drop. It'll go from 14.7 down to 14, 14.1, somewhere in that ballpark until it uh, quits charging altogether. Now the next piece is we need to put some uh, crimp ons um, to a couple of more wires that ultimately are going to go to uh, the iota or to the battery once again and you can see here we're stripping some of the wire and we've got out the hydraulic crimp in this particular case uh, uh, the leads that we had on the original wire from the iota to the battery is done but we need now some eyelets put on some wire that's ultimately going to go to the battery and I had some of these in a kit that I had purchased, uh, some good copper ones. Uh, the downside is is that a typical crimper is just not going to give enough physical force. And an AC4DM has a hydraulic crimper to do just the job. And uh, this is a nifty little tool. You can get these at your box stores or possibly even Harbor Freight. And uh, he's just getting it to where it'll hold on to that eyelet there. And then he's going to insert his wire. And then he's going to start pumping on this thing. And it's going to give us a nice physical connection. That's the thing. You don't use solder here when you go to the battery because we want a physical connection, not uh, solder going back uh, into this particular eyelet. So great physical contact. And you can see he's just pumping on this thing and it is squeezing that eyelet down in and around the wire. And we can just barely see the positive lead there uh, already crimped and it's uh, it, it won't come off. And now he's doing the negative lead the same way. These will also go to the battery once again, but this will be our power coming out that eventually is going to go to the radio. So we're just finishing up the, the crimping there on that wire. We're almost done with this particular project uh, in this particular instance. So I think he's done, and then we're going to uh, connect those to the battery. Now the next piece is on the other end. We wanted to, uh, we've tinned those wires, but we're also adding in the connectors there, the, ins, uh, the actual uh, conductors that we're going to insert into the Anderson power poles. And you can see the wire is now installed both types, uh, both to the IOTA and the one that's going to be coming off for the radio. We're looking at 14.1. So you can see the IOTA has been charging that battery. It's already come down from 14.7 to 14.1. And uh, we have everything connected. Now, this is back at my house and everything's looking great. I've got the IOTA and the battery box there. I've got it connected to my radio. And if I lose power, I can still participate. Folks, it's these kinds of easy projects that you want to knock out. And once you learn the basic skills, uh, have an idea of your budget. The IOTA is 150 bucks thereabouts. Batteries another hundred. Uh, the box is about 20. Some of the wire we'll say is another 10, 20 dollars. You're probably looking at about a 250 dollar project maybe a little less uh, depending on where, what you purchase and what brand you go with. But the great thing is, is that now you're ready for that power outage uh, if it were to occur. Thanks for coming along. 
This is KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Get out there and do some of these easier projects, especially when it comes to power, and we'll see you down the road. 73s, everybody. Yeah.